Do you still have that recording? I do. And you'll supply that recording to this committee? I will. Thank you. Go on. I have uh, proof, evidence, both email and audio, to demonstrate that I've been intimidated by my former director general. I want names and I want uh, positions and departments, please. Who are the who are the senior managers and the political appointees? Name them, I, please. You know I'm going to likely, these are the people that are likely going to get me fired, right? Yes, but you're compelled to answer, Ms. Daly, as difficult as it is. You're intimidated, you're frightened, you're scared, you're concerned about your job. This is the making of a Hollywood movie. Who are these pe who are these people in your opinion? Who are these officials? Who are the who are the senior managers and the political appointees? Name them, I, please. You know I'm going to likely these are the people that are likely going to get me fired, right? Yes, but you're compelled to answer, yeah. Miss Daly, as difficult as it is. Okay. Uh, the I have uh, proof evidence, both email and audio, to demonstrate that I've been intimidated by my former director general. Who's that? Lisanne Bolduc. Lisanne Bolduc? B-O-L-D-U-C. What was her position? Director general. For what? Real property contracting. Which department? Which ministry? Public works. Public works. Okay. Who else? Um, she and my senior director met, uh, made me come to a meeting. Who's on your senior director? My apologies. Tom von Schoenberg. Okay. Um, at that meeting, and I've got a transcript of the audio, if you would like me to quote one of the lines she stated. Who, was, it re was it recorded uh, on consent? It was recorded because I felt I was being harassed. And intimidated. Do you still have that recording? I do. And you'll supply that recording to this committee? I will. Thank you. Go on. Would it be okay if I cite one of the quotes from that meeting? Certainly. Okay, well, CBSA did contact us at the highest level of the department because their investigation is legitimate. And so it came down to us in terms of what we need to do as the procurement department in response to that. But I'm talking about you personally receiving threats of any nature, not in the context of normal business, which like the CBSA did in reaching out to CBSA to PSPC is normal, and is expected in the context of their normal business. I'm talking to you about feeling threatened outside normal requests that would be related to your work. That was one of the three quotes I have got cited on the tape about senior officials. Okay, and this was a taped conversation between yourself and Lisanne 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 Bulduc and Tom von Schoenberg on oh. December the 15th. Okay. What other senior managers, what other political appointees do you reference as being muzzled that you reference that prevented you from speaking the truth? I want names and I want uh, positions and departments, please. So let me just ask the question. You're asking me to say who is preventing me from speaking the truth? Yes. Well, as far as Lee Zambulduk, it was my deputy minister. And Reza. who is that? Ariane Riza. Ariane? Riza. Riza. Can you give me an example? Um, I just could tell you what my director general said to me. As so you know, Diane, the matter is up to our deputy minister and their deputy minister. And the direction that I'm getting as a civil servant, and as you know, this is how it goes down, this is not an option. This is what we have to do. And that deputy minister, Ms. Riza, obviously answers to the minister. The she cabinet does. minister of she the does. government of Canada. She does. Right. Okay. Is it your impression that cabinet ministers were aware of the intense pressure and intimidation that you felt to participate in this process? I am going to refer back to one of the committee hearings that I've reviewed uh, from the deputy minister. And she clearly states in that that she didn't inform the minister until November. And I know the minister on November 28th took responsibility, well, what he knew of responsibility in the press. Who's that minister? Minister Duclos. 
and I believe he has tried to do the right thing. But he wouldn't have known what was going on until at least the fall of 2023, because that's what Ms. Riza made comments to in her appearance before either OGO or and public your, accounts. And your Th opinion, thank you very much, anything Mr. to rectify thank that? Thank you very much, Mr. Brock. That is your time. Yes. Point of order, Chair. Yes, I, I am. I, I am. just witnessed Ms. Khalid, under her breath, use the words F U. And I'm not going to use right, the, right. the full term for that, but it was very, very clear to me. I can look at her literally within five feet. I'm asking her to reflect on what she said, apologize, and withdraw. Uh, Ms. Khalid, I did not catch anything. Do you have any comment you'd like to make? Mr. Mr. Chair, I'm not sure if you want to consult Hansard or, or what uh, what the, the no. testimony has been or what's been recorded, but I think Mr. Mr. Brock is getting a little bit ahead of himself. Okay. I, I, uh, Mr. Brock, your member has the floor. Mr. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's warm in Ottawa. This meeting has been proceeding exceptionally well. I would like to get through Ms. Daly's testimony, who's come in here today to talk about her experience. Mr. Barrett, you have 30 seconds. Well, the floor okay. is yours. Let's back it up to the start of the interruptions, and we'll take the full 45. So, Ms. Daly, Ms. Khalid has gone to great pains to try and say that it's not her government that's responsible for the $60 million fiasco of a RIVE scam, which saw Liberal insiders getting paid while Canadians had to pay for it. They want to lay the blame um, at the feet of yourself and other public servants at your level. Is, is the minister not ultimately responsible for what happens in the department, yes or no? A minister is accountable to Parliament for the actions of their department or Thank agency. Thank you very much, Ms. Daly. And that's, and that's, Chair, exactly why this Liberal government needs to be held accountable, and that's what our function is here, even if Ms. Khalid and her Liberal colleagues don't like it. Thank that you. was quite Thank, a long Thank you very there. much. Uh, Mr. Genuis, do you want to speak to it again briefly? Um, if not, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to turn to other members who have signaled a willingness to or a desire to speak to it. Yeah, Chair, I'll make a few comments about it. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. So uh, this, this is a motion following Ms. Daly's testimony, explosive testimony today, uh, which seeks to invite people that her testimony implicates uh, or, or addresses to come before this committee and respond to the important points uh, she makes. It's also about seeking uh, material information that we need as part of our investigation. Uh, so here, here is the context as, as I see it. Uh, what, are, what are we trying to do here at Public Accounts? This committee is looking for the truth. We want to get accurate information to get to the bottom of what happened in the Arrive Scam affair. Uh, and we have clearly different members or factions within senior public service who are criticizing each other, accusing each other of lying, of covering up information, of trying to cover people at the political level, et cetera. We have these very serious accusations flying back and forth between senior officials within the Trudeau government. It's all a mess. Money's been wasted. Uh, but there are accusations of intimidation, of cover up, of reprisal. Uh, that this committee has to get to the bottom of. So this uh, compounds the you know concern about uh, the arrive scam affair itself, the the tens of millions of dollars that were were spent, the the the, the broken system of government contracting, uh, but also uh, the the lying, the corruption, the cover ups, the reprisals, and the accusations back and forth between different officials uh, to that effect. Uh, Ms. Daly has has had the finger pointed at her. Uh, she's come back and and provided uh, a number of points uh, to counter that, uh, including uh, evidence about various uh, senior officials and and things they have said to her. And also, she's referenced a recording, uh, a, a lengthy recording uh, involving her and. Uh, people that were investigating her. And I think that recording is critical for us understanding whether or not she's faced intimidation, the tone of that, the expectations. What she's uh, told us as a committee is that she was expected to point the finger at Mr. McDonald and Utano. When she didn't do that, uh, then that led to a kind of, um, of, of aggression and pressure. Uh, we need to hear that recording uh, to get to the bottom of whether or not her testimony in this regard is uh, is is credible or not. Here's how I see the process 
having on, unfolded. Uh, on November the 7th, uh, Mr. McDonald and Utano are before Ogo. Uh, at that time, they delivered a critical testimony of the government. They called leading government witnesses liars. Liars. They gave scathing testimony, and they identified that as part of the response to the arrive uh, arrive can affair, Minister Mendicino had been seeking someone's head on a platter. He wanted someone's head on a platter. So later that month, uh, they uh, the, these these uh, two, Mr. McDonald and Utano, uh, get letters indicating further investigation for for bad behavior after right after their committee testimony, strikingly, and they're later suspended without ta- pay. So Ms. Daly is brought in in December. She is, according to her testimony, asked to point the fingers at Mr. McDonald and Itano. She says no. And later that month, they start investigating her. So now you have another public servant, a third, who's under investigation, uh, who appears to be brought under investigation in the same month where they were refusing to play ball with the government's uh, narrative. So this raises big questions. February 12th, the Auditor General puts out her scathing report on the Arrive Scam affair in which she says, among other things, that GC Strategies worked with government officials discussing the specifications of a contract they would then bid on. And obviously, that's a problem. Uh, Christian Firth comes to Ogo on March the 13th. Uh, He refuses to say who he sat down with, which officials were being referenced in the Auditor General's report. Point, and he is so committed to refusing to give that information uh, that that he is called to the bar, ordered to he admonished in order to give responses. And this brings us to late April, April seventeenth. Uh, at that point, he readily gives the name of Diane Daly, a relatively junior public servant uh, who already is under investigation, although he's not supposed to know uh, she's under investigation. So, so the the whole thing raises the question: Why did Mr. Firth give? Diane Daly's name at that point. Now, may, maybe he just, you know, after having covered up for so long, he finally decided to, to to do the right thing. That's one explanation. He just decided at that point he was going to give the do, do the right thing. But but another possible explanation is that Mr. Firth had decided to support the Liberal government's efforts to pin the blame for the Arrive scam fiasco on a few officials while absolving others. Uh, that he was supporting efforts to to help achieve Mr. Mendicino's sought after head on a platter uh, by facilitating efforts of some in government uh, to point the blame at other senior officials uh, and and effectively try to to cauterize uh, the wound to keep keep the discussion from actually digging all the way through to the uh, to to the answers. So uh, this this really exposes a sharp division among senior public servants about who is responsible. Uh, And I am. uh, for I think obvious reasons, deeply suspicious of anything and everything that Christian Firth has said uh, to committee uh, in the House and in public, uh, and uh, I certainly don't think we should take at at face value his claims about Ms. Daly. I think we need to investigate them further, which is why, in the interest of answering the questions we need answered, in the interest of getting to the truth, I put forward this motion uh, to bring in key witnesses who can respond to Ms. Daly's uh, testimony and also getting that recording. I think I think this should be a fairly simple matter. Uh, this is about getting to the truth. And these witnesses and that recording will allow this committee to get to the truth. Was Miss Daly, in fact, uh, someone that was uh, that was deeper into this than her testimony suggests? Or uh, are other people within this liberal government trying to point the finger at her uh, to protect themselves from blame splashing back on them? We want to get to the truth, and this motion will help us do that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Genuous.